Well, the next piece that I'm going to attack is the small trunnion hinge unit. And that would be this piece right here in the center. Every once in a while when you're doing a project, you get something that sneaks up on you and bites you right in the butt. And this is one of those surprise kind of pieces right here. So let me hide this whole chassis and show you exactly what that piece looks like. We're talking about this long bolt right here. And what does that do? Well, that bolt allows this trunnion strap to articulate. Let me put that in the middle of the frame. There you go. It articulates up and down. It is the hinge point that allows the installation, removal, repositioning of that little barrel. Now, when I first opened this piece up and looked at it, it was like, yeah, it's no big deal. It's a hook. Now let's go and make it full screen and show you exactly what we got. That's what it's going to look like when it's done. Now, if I were to do this from a completely round bar, the large circle, you can see that the large circle, that's almost 5 eighths of an inch. 625, 600. That is a considerable diameter material when you're going to end up with just a 3 millimeter or 1 8 diameter projection. Alternate opportunity here, the smaller circle here in the front. That is the eccentric. If we were to turn the smaller diameter eccentric in an eccentric collet, we could use smaller diameter material. Now, that would be a material savings for sure, but this is so long that as you extend this material, the chances of it running uh, out of the eccentric location and coming up with a mild cam in between cuts is really great. So you're, you have an opportunity here to screw something up because you can't maintain the position in the eccentric collet or you can waste 85% of the material being used. What is the solution? Anybody that doesn't want to know what the solution is, hit the pause button right now on the video and type your comment and then come back to, and engage it. I'm going to show you what I came up with and I think it's a very viable solution to this problem. And my solution is to right there segment this guy. I'm going to take the long threaded part on the end. Make that out of 1 8 diameter brass. I will internally thread it. And on the top one, I will use the smaller diameter stock that I'm allowed to use to create the hook and screw them all together. And at the end, I will have a solid unit that will serve the purpose just fine. So that's the plan. Let's get started with making the I probably won't even show making this part right here because that's boring and you've seen me do it a hundred times. But when I get to making this hook up here, we'll tune in on that. How many of you guessed that I was going to segment it and thread it making an assembly? I initially thought about possibly doing it up here, connecting it at the head. But that is about a millimeter thick right there, maybe a little bit more than a millimeter. And I didn't see a viable way to do that aside from counter boring it, counter sinking it, brazing it, cleaning it up, and I just didn't want to go through that. This will all be one solid piece when I'm done. That's the plan. Let's do it. This is the piece that we're going to have to do two of. Pretty straightforward piece. I'm going to do it from a half inch diameter stock. I'm going to be holding the stock on this end, letting this protrude out of the collet block. Now this is an ideal part for a rotary indexer. But the stem here needs to be drilled and tapped, so with a rotary indexer, it would be kind of hard to reposition it going vertical. So I'm going to do it in a square collet block. I'm going to square this off first, remove some of the material, pop a hole in it, mill the slot, and then it's going to be backboard in this presentation here to form this diameter and this shoulder. I may in fact also put this back radius on since it's going to get kind of thin across this cross section right here to do any heavy milling on it after the fact. Let's pop it in the mill, get to it. Going to start the process by establishing a couple of flats on the OD of this material so I know exactly where the bottom of that cutter is and it will make it easier to establish all four sides. Did the wide side first and now we're going to move over to the thin side. Anytime you have to reposition a part and you're in close proximity to a cutter like that, turn the machine off. Don't risk it. It is definitely not worth the risk.
to eliminate the possibility of any material flex. All my finished cuts are very light in nature. And once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to go move over to the face and zero everything out. In comes the edge finder. The next operation in line is drilling a hole. The entire part will be based off of these coordinates right here. 0x and 0y. Small center drill. I'm going to come in here with a pin in a second and just make sure the top of that center drill, the top of that spot is a little bit bigger than the diameter that I'm going to finish up with. This is a 101 diameter drill. It's about two and a half millimeters in diameter. That hole right there will become the inside of the hook feature on this little component. Now to allow this part to swing back and forth and go over the hinge part of the trunnion strap, it has to be a slot. That is an 075 diameter two flute high speed end mill. And I guess that's a, almost two millimeters if you do the math. That's almost two millimeters if you don't do the math, so you choose. There you go. Quick check with a pin to verify the slot will go over the diameter I know I have to clear. This is a little bit smaller end mill. A little bit bigger, actually, but still smaller than the hole. And I am nibbling away at the material to form what's going to appear to be a square projection as a leftover. Small offset from the original center point. I'll move down and this will be the bottom of the hook feature that I'm shaping right now. I expected this piece to fall off, but it didn't. I was really surprised that it hung on. Paper thin. Quick check of the print, quick check of the digital, and establish the finished face. The cut that we're doing now will be the clearance cut for the corner round cutter that's coming up next. That is a 125 diameter end mill. It's about three millimeters. And I'm going to widen up that slot at the top after I finish off the top of the actual part. So the body of the radius cutter will be able to fit in there and not rub anything. And the radius cutter is coming in. That is a 093 corner. 093, that's what, two and a half millimeters, somewhere thereabouts. Right now I'm eyeballing the small diameter of the radius cutter, and now I'm going to do where the top comes down. The X axis of the table is locked. I am raising the knee. So watch that black area disappear. It will migrate to your right, and I'm looking for it to get as close to the edge of the diameter of the cutter as possible. As it approaches the edge, Leave well enough alone. If you go beyond the edge, you're going to get a ridge in your part. And ridges from radius cutters are just no fun. This particular setup is the only advantage to using a square collet block. The part is now positioned vertically with a 1-2-3 block as a locator. And I'm using the edge finder to find the center or the correct position in the middle of that vertical square feature. I'm about to make that into a vertical round feature and drill and tap it. Once everything is zeroed out, we're going to put a boring head in here with the boring bar turned around backwards and run the cutter counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. With the machine running and the quill down against the stop, I am raising the table. When I see a witness mark on the end of the square vertical projection, I'll get the boring bar out of the way and raise the table the length that I want this little round feature to be. 
Now I did have to take several cuts, but a redundant video is just no fun to watch. So I did shorten this up. As this diameter gets smaller, the importance of having the tool correctly positioned is really important. So if you see a difference in the finish between the end of this shot and the beginning of the next one, I did adjust the tool, take a finish pass, and clean everything up. Moving on to the drilling operation, this is a 172 screw that's going in here. This is an 059 imperial size drill. It's about a millimeter and a half, maybe a little bit less. And I'm drilling that almost as deep as that post is long. Mild counter sink by hand. And I'm going to tap it part of the way with it in the machine, then pop it out of the machine and finish by hand. And in an attempt to leave as much material on this for the integrity of the machining operation, this particular slot in the back is the last milling operation before I cut it off. Looks like a little derringer at this point. If I ever decide to make miniature guns, I know how I'm going to do it. Gun models. Sorry, YouTube. No guns on this channel. Part is now positioned in the lay that I'm moving the parting tool in. With an interrupted cut like this on a parting tool, I always like to support the uncontacted side. So if there is any deflection, it doesn't affect where I want to be. I'm going to change the collet out now and flip the part around and hold on that little diameter that I just made in the mill. And why that thing walked out of that collet, I have no clue. going to bring the tool in and I'm going to face it off until that particular step formed by the previous milling operation is gone. That little hook right there. Sharpie marker is always good to assist in your visibility. A couple of facing passes and you're ready to go. That's got to go. The very last operation for this part before this part is considered complete is to radius the last corner. This is a very delicate part right now and easily damaged from the pressure that these curt vices can deliver. I'm going to make a pair of aluminum jaws with a square cut corner as a vertical reference. And I think you'll see how I line it up here in a second. This is not an operation that can be done on top of the machine or on top of the jaws. So all the work is going to be done below the top of the jaw surface. A pair of tweezers. I'm going to try to lay this piece in there so the top of the part and the end of the part are exactly in line with those cuts that I just made or at least one of the two blocks so I know I'm vertical. I am also looking at the round section of this part to assure that that is vertical in regards to the surface that I cut. Grab a sharpie marker in a second here and black up the surfaces so I can see what I'm doing. And come back in with the corner round tool and put the last feature on this part. I am holding this with the most delicate grip but I know that I'm holding it tighter than the impact or the forces that are going to be applied by that tool. So let's hope it turns out well. All right, if your patient's held up and the planet's lined up and you got out on the right side of the bed this morning, this is what you can expect when you're done. This was a more challenging part than I initially thought it would be, but I think the approach was really sound. Here's the second half of it. So there you go.
Let's put this together and at least mock up one side so you can see how it functions. There is the Canon chassis itself. And this front component will go down, go through the axle, and get cinched up. So I can't put a screw on that, or I can't put a nut on that right now. I'll show you what it's all about. One side of the trunnion strap will go over the trunnion itself. I will now tighten this up. And that assembly, that's how it'll do, right there. The wedge that holds the front retaining pin in will have a drop chain to some feature on the side here, but that's what you get. What you see is what you get. Pull that out. Open this up. Turn you now free to go, right? We reposition the cannon barrel. Well, I'll just have to make three more of those, two for the Civil War field artillery cannon that I would like to build, and one for the other side. If you do try this and it doesn't fit, a file will be your friend. Don't be afraid to make it work. This is something that has to be functional at assembly. I do appreciate you spending some time with me today. Thank you very much for tuning in. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you are well and happy and safe. All of the above. Me, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. I'm out.